Gabriel died on February 14th. When he died, Maya only found out about it late at night when the police department decided to send her a text. They had called her 183 times all day since the accident happened. But you know, Maya doesn't like to talk over the phone. This is Maya, and that is him. Throughout the almost 12 years they were together, they had seriously discussed about every possible terrible scenario that might affect them, such as senility or an incurable disease. However, what they didn't think through was what to do if one of them suddenly died, and that has become a problem. Not so much because of the obvious consequences of an extremely codependent person facing life by herself, but because now she doesn't know what to do with what is left of him. It would have been so much easier if they had decided to bury you. I would have gone to the cemetery every week to see you and I could have moved on with my life. But they gave me this thing. And they told me this is you. And everybody thinks I have to scatter your ashes somewhere. And you know, I can't even pick where to go to have dinner. After hours of a long and painful struggle to make up her mind, Maya decided to spread Gabriel's ashes in the sea. She almost chose doing it at his favorite vinyl record store, because Gabriel loved music more than he wished to learn how to surf. But she backed out at the last minute when she realized it probably wasn't legal to do that. So Maya drove down the highway while listening to the songs they used to sing along together. Garden grows. I just wanna fly lately Do you ever feel the pain When the morning rains Cause it's so cute the Parked in a lonely spot she found by the beach Got out of the car and walked close to the water Carefully carrying her late husband's ashes with her you were supposed to die before me, but you weren't supposed to die so soon. What am I going to do now you're gone? What am I supposed to do when I scatter you over here so only the fucking dolphins can be close to you when I'm the one who needs you? Don't you know this is a dangerous place? Well, life too. Maybe worse, but you're letting me hear. I hate you. Are you listening to me? I hate you. I will say goodbye to you because you don't deserve it, okay? You don't deserve it. I'm going to throw you just like that. And I should have done it in a trash can. Do you understand? She just couldn't do it. Maya stayed there looking at the clouds melting on the horizon with Gabriel's ashes by her side. And then she went home. That night, Maya got home and found a flyer slid through her door. She picked it up and read it. Wondering what to do with your significant other when he or she is not around anymore? Make him or her pocket-sized and carry your valentine all the time. Maya got online and did some research. So she filled out a lot of release forms, signed a contract, sent Gabriel's remains through the mail, and went back home to wait anxiously for the results. Exactly 45 minutes later, a drone knocked on the door. When she opened it, she found a box on the floor. Maya went in her apartment, looked through the windows to ensure there wasn't anybody around, and like a little girl unwrapping a new toy, she saw Gabriel's face for the first time in hours. Maya took pocket-sized Gabriel out of the box, seated him on the couch, like always, and looked at him. It was noticeably similar to Gabriel. It was so similar that her reaction was undoubtedly of rejection. 
but then she kind of liked the idea of having her partner back so they could be again like peas and carrots just like the old days from that moment on things were awesome it was maya and gabriel together again They watched old movies on TV. They took incredibly good looking pictures together. They laughed together. They slept together. They worked together. They avoided people together. And they drove around listening to music together a lot. It had been six months since Gabriel's accident, and everything was going okay when she started getting texts from guys who wanted to invite her on a date. What? I don't answer, but I cannot do anything if they text me. I can tell that my husband is a 10-inch doll. Are you mad? Where are you going? But you've been a little bit irrational right now. Don't walk away from me. I would also rather die than see you with another woman. But you were the one who died. You were the one who died. The sound of Gabriel's shattered, fragile body broke Maya's heart as well. What has she done, she thought, and felt a storm inside because it was like watching her love die one more time. That night, Maya fixed Gabriel very carefully with super glue and laid him down next to her, but she couldn't sleep. The next morning, Maya put Gabriel on the passenger seat, as always, and drove. When I'm gone, you read this email. I couldn't stand losing you again. So, this has to end the way it is now. I knew it from the moment they started calling me the day you die. That's why I didn't pick up. Because I knew I wouldn't be able to let you go. And I was right. I couldn't. I'm here talking to a doll. See if this doll was you. But it's not. And I realized it so long time ago. But I try. And I keep trying to keep you here to imagine a way. I know what I have to do. I really do. But fuck, it's hard. It's so hard. It's fucking painful to love you now. But even if I could not to love you, I would love you again, over 